Well, today we're going to take a look at a new mini Hazard 4 sling pack in the Bandolier Mini Optic and EDC CCW bag. And we're going to ask ourselves the question, is this rigid, compact design with a lot of unique features exactly what someone would need for an everyday carry bag or is it trying too hard to be a jack of all trades and becomes a master of none we're going to answer that in today's video all right guys so we'll go ahead and jump into some of these specs here right out of the gate now the first thing is that it does have cordura fabric is what this is made out of so that's always a good thing uh, to see here. The product weight is 1.5 pounds. The total gear capacity is 2 liters or 124 cubic inches. So it's, again, really compact. This is a compact bag. The um, external size is 15.4 inches long is how long it is. It's going to be 6.3 inches wide and 3.9 inches deep. And then it goes through all the main compartments. Uh, the Cordura material is 1000 denier Cordura and then PU times two water repellent coating, um, which is uh, what it has. And then it has their hard shell um, kind of rigid structure there with their hard point attachments that we're going to talk about here in just a moment. So, so the exterior here is what we're going to look at first. We got that again, rigid frame. It's interesting. It's different. I, I, I connect with it. I don't have any qualms with it. Uh, what you have here is the PVC style logo of hazard four. It's sewn in. That's not like a patch that can be removed. Um, I think it would have been kind of cool to have that, but um, you know, it's, it's fine as it is. It's not super flashy or obnoxious. Then we have three straps right here of what would be basically pals webbing. They're bolted in nice and tight. You can definitely get like a hook and loop attachments underneath this right here so you could attach say like a sunglass case or like a tourniquet pouch that's about the maximum i would put on the outside of this um, bag it's just not really designed to carry a lot of weight it's not designed to have some big you know medical kit or something like that attached or you know some huge i'm gonna put you know three full-size magazine pouches there's just not really designed for that it does have the ability to handle some nice pow patches right there so you can definitely do some of that pick that one up that's a cool gas mask logo um, on the hazard four uh, website now they have here these attachments which i've got to say all right so let's talk about the ride and the carry options because there's basically two carry options the first thing is that they have their auto shift is what they call it ambidextrous shoulder strap so you can carry this as a sling bag either over your right or left shoulder so it has kind of a stationary point up here at the top this is the top of the bag so you have this v attachment here now something to note i don't know how well you guys can see this on frame here but we definitely have some fraying. I have some fraying here and some fraying here. And I haven't seen fraying like this on a pack in a while. So the stitching is okay here, but I'm seeing it down here too. Um, for the price point uh, that we'll talk about, I'm not super pumped about that. It's not bad, but it kind of just reminds me of cheaper designing. Um, even most of my lately, my 511 stuff doesn't have issues like this. And um, other brands, you know, that would be like middle of the road, which I would put in the same category as, um, you know, Hazard 4. So I was kind of surprised that I was seeing all this fraying. Um, you, know, you definitely will see that like on a van quest or whatever. So anyway, you get this V, uh, you get these Molly attachment points that we'll talk about here in a moment that you can slide gear through. Me breathable mesh uh, looped over on either side. So it's not going to bite into your neck very much. So that's good. Long mesh point down here to the clip. Now what's kind of cool is that they have a lockout feature. So right now, if I squeeze this, it's not going to drop, uh, but then you can swap that little lever right there. Open that guy up if you want to. So you can just have it open all the time if you want, which is probably what I would tend to do. But if for whatever reason you did want to lock it out, it does have that little feature. It's cool. works. Then you do have this grab handle piece right here to help with adjustment. They do have a little Velcro keeper right there just to keep all the excess. And there is plenty for excess. I mean, I'm a bigger guy at 6'2", about 220 to 215. Uh, and uh, we're large size shirts. You know, I got plenty, I had plenty of real estate left over on that strap. Uh, and then the rest of the strap that goes down to their auto shift feature right here, which is this um, basically super heavy duty. I don't know what you want to call it. Just a, it's, I don't know. Not, it's not climbing rope. It's harder and denser than that. But anyway, it just slides. So if you put it on your right or your left, it will just slide side to side. Now, the idea of that is really cool. Um, but what I found 
after having carried this multiple times, both hiking, trekking, just doing little walks with the family around the lake, you know, things like that, but also just going to uh, getting groceries, you know, carrying all the gear that you're seeing here. Um, this is something that I discovered. All right, guys, so I've been walking with this shoulder sling bag for about 40 minutes, kind of show you, hopefully you guys are gonna be able to see how it's riding. So this is like the resting place. That's comfortable for me. It's not choking me out. Just so you guys can see there. It's like riding on its zipper, kind of like on a half side. Like it's not like whoosh, like up to make it more comfortable and get that breathable portion up against it. It kind of like rides in this weird angle. It's not like brutal, but it's just weird. and doesn't feel supernatural because that zipper is riding on my back. So, um, and that's just part of the design. There's not a whole lot you can do about it. So it's not, because of this thing just kind of being loosey-goosey, it doesn't give this rigid point um, to kind of keep it up against your back. So it kind of tends to roll slightly, and then you're not getting this nice breathable mesh up against your back. You're really getting more of kind of like this little portion, like a quarter of it, and then kind of up on the zipper a little bit. So it's not horrendous. I'm not like, oh my gosh, this is the worst, but it ain't perfect either it's not like a nice snug fit up against my back so that was something to consider then they do have these two nicely weaved grab handles both top and bottom just to pick up and lift the bag however you would like but also giving you the ability to grab it when it's on your back and shift it in front of you very quickly now the other cool feature that they offer is that it's designed to be able to be carried as basically a, a fanny pack a waist pack uh, so I did trek with that a little bit again fully loaded out cinched it down and it re rode rather nicely um, and it was able to carry the gear fine. I could easily have done a trek with that. I probably wouldn't want to go jogging um, with it like that. I just think it's kind of boxy uh, and would have slung the gear around too much and probably I'd need to cinch it down a lot. Uh, but I could easily do a hike with it. Again, carry it around with the family if I just wanted to wear it that way. Um, you know, I don't know. They show a lot of their, you know, promotion is with tactical gear all tacked out, running and gunning with this thing. Uh, I haven't tried it that way. I probably wouldn't carry it that way. But if that's something you want to try, there is the option for that. And when you wear it on your belt, you have all these PALS webbing loops to attach. So you could put like a water bottle or magazine attachments or a med kit, you know, and wear it as a basically like a tactical fanny pack um, or waist pack. So I wasn't fully informed on how these worked. Uh, and it's part of their hard point system. So I bought these little attachments right here, um, which are supposed to basically screw in. And then you have this polymer PVC little loop right there. Uh, you know, you could put a carabiner on, maybe attach like a bike light if you're gonna be cycling with this or different things. And, the, and some of their larger packs have this for like lashing points. The concept's really cool. I wanted to try it out. I was like, hey, this would be sweet. And I was expecting either the bag or this little combo pack, which was not cheap. I mean, it was like, I think it was like five bucks or something, five to eight bucks for these two little polymer loop, basically that will screw in there. Um, neither one of them came with any screws to mount it to this. So I literally would have to buy separately screws to go through the PVC loops and in through these holes. And that, that's a separate purchase. The bag didn't come with a set. And when I bought the PVC attachment hard points, those didn't come with screws either. So you actually have to buy that separately. I guess some kits do come with screws, but that was super annoying. So now I either have to go back. Those The screws are sold separately for like $3 plus shipping it's like eight dollars literally for a pack of screws or i could go to the hardware store i guess but then we're like jack i mean it's just like why would you not send every set of these guys right here to a screw in and attach with the screws to actually attach them this is, this is now useless with this kit and uh, i don't know so that that was just like I don't know. It's an oversight in my opinion, and they should definitely rectify that. And either every bag come with enough screws to mount what you want, or every time you buy one of those, they need to come with at least the mounting hardware. I mean, it's like giving you half the mounting hardware. It's super weird. So anyway, that was a, a kind of an irritation straight out of the box um, the day I got it, but uh, we'll move on from there. All right, so we'll open this guy up. Now we have two very large overbuilt YKK zippers, good pulls on there. They run great. 
Uh, and I didn't mention this it does come in either black or tan at the moment. Uh, it would be cool to have them do a, a gray man color. I think their gray man color is pretty cool. So you open this bad boy up, clamshell the heck out of it. So we'll look at this area first. So there's some uniqueness as well as just some kind of like I don't know what to do with. So the cool part I think is this pocket right here. Very, very cool setup. What it is is this ambidextrous um, sliding pocket basically. So I have put my little... Um, uh, medical kit in there. So you could easily put a cell phone, a wallet, probably cell phone and wallet in there. Um, you could even not need the pouch and just do like a SWAT tourniquet, cell ox patch, you know, and, and or maybe an Israeli band. So, I mean, you can do a lot of different stuff in there. I also have my bandana with all the wearing the mask stuff going on right now in the world. Uh, but what's cool is that it's ambidextrous, so it's like this slide-through pocket, so if you wanted to open it on the bottom end for whatever reason, you could fold it that way, and now the flap is here, and you access it from the bottom, or how I had it. This is a really cool feature. I think that's a really cool design. It's pretty large, and it's adjustable in its size. So again, if I needed to kind of like fold it here and fold it here, I mean, that's a lot of capacity to be able to hold different items in there. So it's just a cool little feature. Never seen that on another product before. I think that's a really unique, smart design. Okay, next up we have a small elastic band here that you could get a smaller like AAA to AA size diameter flashlight in. So I have my little Streamlight MicroStream USB in there. Then you have one pen slit. It's kind of shallow though. This is just a basic size pen uh, and I can't even get the little clip you know, to attach. So that would have been nice to have it higher. And then one smaller pouch here that I can get my Leatherman Wave into just barely. So you could do a pocket knife. Um, you could do a larger flashlight if you wanted to, or again, a multi-tool. Now what's really interesting, again, because they've designed this to kind of be like CCW, EDC, and mini camera, you have these two little pockets right here that are designed your memory cards. So that's kind of cool. Uh, different never seen anything like that i will be honest with you I, I wouldn't need that i would have somewhere else probably that would have the pockets i believe it's kind of a waste of space right here it would have been better just to have a couple different po size pockets maybe one larger so you can do a pen a multi-tool and then i don't know something else either just a bigger multi-tool uh so you know you could fit a tourniquet down in the pot you know, make it elastic or something I, I just don't need a designated pocket for my memory cards I'm either gonna have it like in a little Ziploc baggie or something or whatever. That's how I roll. Maybe some people will be like, that's ingenious, I love it. For me, it just doesn't connect with me and I feel like this is kind of a waste of space and I wouldn't be throwing my memory cards in there on a regular basis. As we shift on the other side over here is this mesh um, paneling with an angled zipper, YKK for both, which is good, you know, top, bottom, however you wanna uh, get access to it. And this is gonna be where the hard shell kind of cases and again this is designed i think they said an x an rx 100 like body and then probably you'd have to either a camera that has the lens go into the body or possibly you know depending on how short your lens was you could probably work something in there uh it's just a dump pocket this is where you have those screws back in here go through i don't know if you guys can see that on film but they have a little cover so that when you're not attaching stuff again why would you not have the screws just so crazy but anyway uh, i have a pair of sunglasses i got my knock around gi joe sunglasses uh, these are back in stock when i am filming this they may not be when uh, the video goes live but go check them out link below um, those were the very first knock arounds i ever got super good uh, and then i have my uh, gopro so it would fit a gopro you know so if you are that's how i would roll um, being a YouTuber, you know, um, and an action, you know, activity YouTuber. So it would definitely, you know, fit my GoPro. I could definitely throw some extra batteries in there, a mini little tripod or something like that, or a little selfie stick if I was doing like my phone or something. Um, different things can fit in there. You know, it's got a decent dimension of probably about like an inch and a half right there. The dimensions are on their website. Um, you know, and there's a little bit of give with this mesh. So it's nice. It kind of protects, you know, like the camera a little bit more than if it was just of, of, cloth you know f um, fabric type of backing so it's interesting it's different um some of you'd be like well that's super cool some of you'd be like man it's just stuff's just flying around in there why am i doing that so pros and cons depending on how you want to lay your bag out all right next up the second pocket again same thing big fat ykk zippers this is your ccw and other compartments um so this guy will open up again clamshelling itself and it will and this has been 
cleared, already checked, no mag in the mag well, and already checked, I'm not gonna take it out. This is my Glock 19 with a spare mag. So um, it will absolutely fit that in most other, you know, double stack, compact or subcompact pistols. Um, and I did, some of the action you're seeing, I was absolutely carrying that fully loaded, you know, in there and stuff like that. So that's just something to consider that, so that's a hook and loop wall. It did not come with um, the pouch or excuse me, like the, the holster attachment. And this is a CYA holster, links on Amazon if you want to check it out um, as well. And then this is a Hazard 4 just loop over that I picked up for probably like four bucks, eight bucks, something like that. So uh, hook and loop everywhere. So you could do other things. You could get like hook and loop little pouches. You could do pockets, you know, if you're not doing CCW in here or whatever. Um, I just wanted to try it for weight. I usually do not carry CCW like that unless I have gym shorts. That's really the only time I ever do that. And even then I'm trying to find a better way to carry it on body. So that is a positive, particularly in the summertime as things are getting warmer when I'm filming this, you could carry your CCW this way. Then on this other side, you just get these two little elastic mouth Velcro like sleeve pocket. So that's just a dump pocket. Here's another just dump pocket. So if you have your firearm, you really aren't going to be able to get anything more than just documentation. If you needed some paperwork or something in there, um, you know, again, if you're filling maybe like a release form <laughs> or something, uh, I mean, that's about it. If you're not carrying a firearm in there, then you could stuff it out a little bit more. You could put, you know, a little EDC pouch in there, put a couple of EDC equipment pieces in there, um, you know, just loose stuff. But um, the diameter of the, the bag itself is not going to allow for any sort of like technology. Tablets are not going to fit in there, um, you know, uh, things like that are not going to fit in here. Obviously no computer or anything like that. So I don't really put anything in here unless it's just like maybe my wallet, maybe if I needed to or something like that. Uh, so maybe something a little bit different would have been better here. Um, even just like maybe up here, some organization and then down here, the pouch or something. I don't know. So it just doesn't, it just doesn't really get used, particularly if I put the firearm in there. And even when I didn't a couple times, I was like, what am I going to slide in here? I don't know. You know, because the pocket is slimmer, this, this side, this is where the, the dimensions and the thickness are up here. It's pretty slim. So if it's, you know, thicker than about an inch, inch and a half with, you know, the size of like a pistol, it ain't going to, it ain't going to fit in this pocket in general. So, all right, guys, just want to run in some competitive options as well as just talk price with you on the bag. So the bandolier itself, normal going rate is $85. Um, so I'll have links for you guys over to Amazon. If this is connecting with you, you can check that out. You can also check out Hazard for themselves um, and see, you know, what, what other options, different things like that. If maybe a color's out of stock. Um, or whatever. So $85 is the normal going rate. And then if you get those hard mounts, I mean, you're looking at probably about 90 to 95 bucks. Um, if you want to attach anything to those little holes that we talked about, don't forget your screws. Um, <laughs> so uh, just to give us some options and give us some food for thought here, though this is the smallest of the two options, um, what I have over here is the 511 LV6, uh, I believe. Um, sling bag or uh, LV10, excuse me. This is the LV10 um, low vis 511 bag. Normal going rate is $110, so it's definitely you know more expensive, uh, but it's going to be a lot larger. It's going to have a lot more features in there, lots more organization. It is not ambidextrous, it is designed for only right handed shoulder, um, but it will even carry a 48 ounce Nalgene down the sleeve here. Um, it's semi not rigid, but it definitely has some structure to it. So, again, um, I think it would easily be able to handle a lot of camera equipment um, in that regard uh, it can even handle a much larger it could hold a handle I would argue a full-size um, 1911 probably um, definitely um, your mid-size pistols over you know just the compacts uh, and again I could just use like this Kelty I have this little Kelty guy this is what I use for my GoPro it's got the idea of this hard rigidness or some rubber and stuff like that and I would just throw my equipment in there that thing was probably like 10 bucks boom array rock and roll so obviously more expensive but you're getting a lot more real estate um, and some extra features more this you can definitely carry a full EDC loadout loadout and some good size camera equipment uh, much more camera equipment than this could carry without much issue uh, and then over here I have and this guy's like 70 maybe 65 bucks 70 bucks is the helicon um helicon tex um, courier bag now that's just a standard style messenger bag um so that would absolutely be able to carry though most tablets 
um, comp smaller size computers. I've done a whole video on that. Cordura fabric as well. Um, really well built, really well laid out, really like it a lot. Uh, there's a lot of cool features there, uh, and that is definitely something I take to the office a lot. Again, the 511 could also carry, it carries my full-size iPad. I've been able to fit that in there that, again, the Hazard 4 would not. So, again, the Hazard 4 is rigid. It's definitely more compact. You can wear it as a fanny pack. That's absolutely true, but it's kind of like, well, where does it fit compared to what else is on the market there? Um, and I would say it's right in the middle of the road. It's not too expensive, but it's not um, on the cheaper end either. So, just want to give you some food for thought there. I'll have links for you guys uh, below for all these bags if you want to check them out and i've reviewed this 511 and that helicon as well if you want to check those out i think it's a very appropriate patch for this era and season of life that we are living in so guys uh in conclusion with this bandolier pack i think it's a, a good idea i think it was an innovative unique design but i think as i said and stated in the intro it's a jack of all trades and i i can't figure out where i would deploy it like it's not it just doesn't have quite the layout for me for like everyday carry um it as a fanny pack it's probably the best ride but again i'm not going to go to the office or to um the grocery store wearing this as a fanny pack i'd ra way rather wear this as you know a shoulder bag um and then as an optic carrying case you know if i was like really doing a lot of filming um, yeah, I, I mean, maybe, but then I'm like all of my extra stuff, if I'm carrying a camera bag itself, I'd want to be able to carry a little more for my everyday carry system. But for you guys, it might be exactly what you're looking for. And there are absolutely some good materials in this, in the Cordura and the YKK. I think that if there's a particular way that you see this fitting in your system, I don't, I think you'll be happy with it. Um, for me, it's just kind of this how do I use this? I just kept on asking myself, asked my wife, I'm like, can you see a need for this? She's like, I don't know. And so I just can't find where this would fit and take precedent over some of the other sling bags or shoulder bags that I showed you um, today in the competitive options. So I want to hear from you guys. Where do you see the Hazard 4 bandolier fitting? Is it something that you're like, dude, this is like the bee's knees, man. Um, or is this something that you're like, eh, I, I, it's cool, but I don't, I don't know. I don't get it. Um, and so that's kind of where I'm at. I'm like, it's cool. I just don't know how to deploy it well in my systems. And if I can't deploy it well in my systems, I'm not going to use it. So, uh, that's where I'm at guys. Look forward to hearing your feedback, comments, questions, concerns. Uh, that's what we love to do here at the channel, giving you guys ideas, uh, throughout the video and just showing you what products can do so that you can make the wise choice. For you, it may be exactly what you need. For others, you're like me and you're like, I don't get it. So um, thanks so much for coming over today, checking out the channel. Please subscribe if you're not a current subscriber. Check out the other video popping up. You can check us on Instagram and Facebook, throwing up stuff there all the time. And finally, guys, don't forget you're not alone. And always remember, stay equipped, stay prepared. We'll see you out there.